I have showed you beautifully finished watches on the channel many times, but this, this is another level. Hello, welcome to Swiss Watch Camp, the channel where I help you discover rare and beautiful watches, which usually you haven't seen before or heard yet, or at least so I hope. Today is no different. Buckle up and get ready because today's watches might just take your breath away. Ferdinand Berthoud was born in 1727, so almost 300 years ago, in Val de Travers, which today is in the Neuchâtel canton of Switzerland. He was born into a distinguished family of watch and clockmakers. When he was 14, he became a clockmaking apprentice to his brother, Jean-Henri Berthoud in Cuvée, while also receiving a sound scientific education. You see, in the 18th century, a watchmaker had to know all about watch movements, but he also had to be a scientist, mathematician, and it didn't hurt if he was also an astronomer, as well as a geographer. It's not easy for us to fathom today just how incredibly difficult it must have been to make an accurate timepiece without electricity, without microscopes, and also without clean and efficient manufacturing techniques, laboratory-like workshops and CNC machines. It took the best of the best in the world, and Ferdinand Berthoud was exactly that in the 1700s. Berthoud was obsessed with timekeeping accuracy and performance. At the time, the finest watchmakers of England and France and the Netherlands competed to create the most accurate marine chronometers. These were the GPS's of the time, because it was only with an accurate onboard clock that sailors could accurately determine the longitude, while latitude was relatively easy to figure out in the middle of the sea. If the marine chronometer on board was inaccurate, sailors could end up lost or in totally different destinations. Thanks to his extremely accurate marine chronometers number 6 and number 8, at the age of 43, Berthoud was commissioned as horologist mechanic to the King of the Navy. And at 77 years old, Napoleon I made him a Knight of the Legion of Honor as a member of the Institut de France. If you're ever visiting Zurich, please check out the Bar Watches and Clocks Museum here. You can actually see a real Ferdinand Berthoud ship chronometer there. It's in great condition and truly a rare sight to see. Fast forward to the early 2000s and you meet Mr. Karl Friedrich Schäufele, the co-president of Chopard and basically the head of the watch division of Chopard for decades. He became a fan of Adrian Berthoud's legacy as soon as he discovered it, but it was only much later that he finally decided to go forward and pay tribute to the master watchmaker, with an ultra-limited, ultra-high-end boutique brand that he hoped would be worthy of that legacy. He developed what we know today, the modern chronometry Ferdinand Berthoud, under the Chopard name, relying on the in-house prototyping, researching and manufacturing know-how Chopard has accumulated under his guidance over the years. Don't forget that Chopard has been making kick-ass in-house movements in its Fleurier manufacture since 1996. That said, Ferdinand Berthoud operates as a completely independent brand. It couldn't do any other way given the complexity of the company and its collections. I have the pleasure of showing you three watches here today, one more mesmerizing than the other. The chronometer FB2T.2-1, the FB3SPC.1, as well as the FB3SPC.2. Let's start with the chronometer FB2T.2-1. This watch presented the brand's debut caliber in a round case. The brand premiered with a powerful octagonal case back in the day to pay homage to the onboard marine chronometers of Bertou from the 1700s. I had the pleasure of taking some photos of it back in 2016 here in Zurich, and I gotta say, I really like the special case design. It features a mind-blowing three-dimensional movement with a fusing chain and a, also a tourbillon. The movement is constructed like pocket watches and clocks of the old times, not with solid plates, but with plates held by small pillars or columns so you can see through them. The case pack reveals massive sapphire crystal plates that further reveal as much of the movement as possible. The finishing is really top tier, up there with the absolute best in the business. There's so much to discover in this movement, from the decoration techniques to the little chain and the steady beat of the hand-finished tourbillon. From the side, the case even features a small sapphire window. Through this window, you can also see the side of the little chain winding and unwinding as the days pass. Here you can see how tiny the components of the chain really are compared to my finger. Just imagine assembling one, how steady and precise you have to be. There's beveling as far as the eye can see, on the movement as well as on the dial side. The dial is very easy to read, it features a skeletonized hour and minutes hand on the 12 o'clock subdial. There's also a long blued seconds hand. The dial is vertically brushed and also features a power reserve indicator at 9 o'clock, featuring hand polished edges, grain finish and a nice arrow shaped hand. I could go on for days about this watch, as you see, lots and lots of details to discover. 
I love the height and depth of the movement. It's very three-dimensional. I love the symmetry. And again, just looking at that Turbion beat is something that I really appreciate. Ferdinand Bertou was one of the greatest watchmakers you've probably never heard about before. And the Ferdinand Bertou of today is one of the greatest watch brands that you've probably never heard about either. There's a quarter of a century between the two, but the similarities between historic watchmaker and ultra high-end watch brand is something worth knowing if you're a watch enthusiast or collector. Let's jump into the other two models, the 3SPC. We have the two versions here, one with the 18 karat white gold case and the other with the 18 karat rose gold case, designed to recall the curves of pocket watches from around the turn of the 18th and 19th century, such as the decimal watch number 26, made in 1793 by Louis Bertou. I love the classic look of the 2N pale yellow gold movement components and an actual color dial in sandblasted silver toned brass. Appearing at 9 o'clock, the three main escapement organs, the balance wheel, pallet lever and escape wheel, are spread out in old school fashion with lots of space so the owner can admire them in full. Definitely my favorite part of this watch, I fell in love once I started filming it. Just admiring the intricacy of the movement beating and the three dimensional look of it, easily accessible from the front as well as from the back side of the movement. Once you take a closer look, you will notice that it's not a normal balance spring. What we have here on these two models is a cylindrical balance spring beating throughout the three-day power reserve, revealed also by a large porthole created on the side of the case. The second dial, the one of the 3SPC.2 model, features a black varnished mini track with black rhodium treated visible movement components. Just like the white gold version, this is also perfectly proportioned and super elegant. It will definitely age like fine wine over the years and decades. This version features all the same polishing and decoration techniques and personally, it's my favorite. The contrast between the plates, gears and rubies is starting to look at. The three-dimensional aspect of these watches, the amount of details and the accuracy is unparalleled. This movement is also beautifully hand-finished from all sides, so again, I know I emphasized a lot about the decoration and finishing of these watches, but it's really something you would love to discover more and more of. The watches are very wearable on the wrist. Ergonomically, they are very well proportioned. For example, the case of the 3SPC models is 42.3 mm wide and just 9.43 mm thick. Amazing considering that it encapsulates a cylindrical hairspring that adds a lot of height to the escapement. The 2T.2-1 model in comparison has a thickness of 14.3 mm as well as a diameter of 44 mm. Again, considering how many components you have to fit in this watch, it's remarkable. The level of engineering, decoration finishing and overall attention to detail comes with a price. Considering there's not a lot of competition on the market, I think it's fair. We're really in the upper echelon of watchmaking here, guys. Let me know what you think and also which one would you pick? It's fair to say that Fedan Bertou was amongst the most talented and most successful watchmakers of his time, already recognized during his lifetime. Thankfully, the new Fedan Bertou follows and the watches are beautifully executed and so unique that there is no question that these two will be popular and loved by their collectors. If you have a chance to see one in person, do that. Take a loop and really take your time because they're beautiful. Let me know which model would you choose for yourself and make sure to check out the links in the video description to learn more about this beautiful historic brand. Special thanks to the team at Fede Number 2 for supporting my channel. Thank you for watching and as always, I'll see you next week with a very special video.